everybody. Today I'm going to work on a logic board of this Macintosh Plus because when I turn it on there is no bar and we get this which doesn't look too good. Now I know this Macintosh um, works fine so the analog board and the CRT screen are both okay because I just put in the faulty logic board to, to show you this error. And now I'm going to dismantle it. Here we have the Macintosh Plus logic board. As you can see, Mac Plus. Then we have a serial number here. The RAM chips, which appear to be 256K chips. So this logic board has one megabyte of RAM. How to take it out of your Mac, I'm already showing in several other videos. So you can check that out by going to the other episodes of my channel. Now we have seen this screen appear. So let's check what Mr. Larry Pina has to say. I've already marked the spot. So the problem is actually exactly as described here. There is no startup bar. The display is filled with alternating white and black logical bars. And he suggests that the problem occurred after a ROM upgrade or an SCSI upgrade. And the problem is on the logic board. And he thinks that the ROM chips might have been installed reversed or otherwise incorrectly. These two are the ROM chips. I verified that they're in fact installed correctly. So what I will do is I will take these out, give them a little cleaning at the contacts, put them back in, and I will also do the same with the RAM chips. So maybe the problem is just a contact problem. Now turn it sideways and I will try pulling out the ROM chips very carefully because it's supposed to be a delicate process. So you should do that slowly one side a little bit, the other side another little bit in order to not bend any contacts. Up. All right. And there we go. Here we have the ROM chip. Number two. All right. So probably one of these contacts has just been corroded. This one is a little bent. So I will clean them very carefully with a bit of contact spray. But since we're at it, so take out the round chips. So we have these little springs at the side. Need to loosen a spring, then you loosen the other side. Then you can take it out. Okay. So what I will use is, like I said, it's a WD-40 contact spray and I will use it with the Q-tip. Just make sure not to touch it because it's, well, not the healthiest substance. And now I'm going to clean these pins. Logic 
board and just clean it with a bit of compressed air. Okay, now back to the board and reinstall the parts. Now regarding the ROM chips, there are two. And as you see in the middle, they have different numbers. 3420341 and 0342. It's important to put them in the right order. Now on the logic board, there is this says high and this says low and ironically we have to put the lower number in the high pin socket and vice versa. Moment of truth. No, still no bong. Screen still with the same error. Okay, failed. Try again. I have removed the logic board again, and as you can see, I have removed the runs again. And what I will try next is I have another logic board that has a different problem. So I'll try if these ROM chips will work with this logic board. Because that way we will be able to figure out whether the problem is indeed with these ROM chips in general or whether it's a different part of the logic board. Okay, next try. And again, there is no bong, which means the problem is not the ROM chips. Next up, same approach, different part. So I've removed the RAM chips and will install RAM chips from the other board in order to see if that was the problem. All right, reassembled. Next try. Still no bong. And well, the screen looks different. That's interesting. Because as you see, these columns are a lot smaller and have a different shape so it's probable that we're on the right way but still not there yet okay at this point we have eliminated the ROMs as problem source so it's probably the sim or the RAMs mm. I have tried to find out something in the books in here i couldn't find a specific problem described that matches our issue but in Derry Pina's earlier book <coughs> i went to the section for memory upgrades and what he writes here is that if you have a white striped screen as shown in figure 1340 that would be this one and that will be close to what we have, then it's probably the SIMs or the RAMs that are loose, which in essence means we're going to work on this section here and see if we can find out any problems. Now, the first thing I'm trying to check is the resistor for the RAMs, which you can find here. 
can read more about this in the book, but essentially it means that we have this resistor here set at 256k bit, which means if the resistor is placed here, there should only be four 256k rams present, which was the case at the beginning. Now, just as a short explanation, this has to be removed if the system is upgraded to one megabyte RAMs or any other size than 256. And this resistor has to be installed in one row here if there are only RAMs installed in these first two sockets, which is row number one and row number two. Now, knowing now that these sockets are connected to this resistor, I'm going to check that one first and see if it failed. So I've set up the multimeter and this resistor is supposed to have 150 ohms resistant. Okay, this looks exactly fine. So the resistor reads as it should and is not the problem. What I'm doing next, or what I already did, just to show you, I was checking these sockets in order to identify if there are any pins broken or missing or any plastics broken. But everything seems perfectly fine here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these RAM chips one more time, a little bit better now with with the spray I just show you with the contact spray and then I'm going to reinstall it and we will try again moment of truth again turning on and apparently nothing happens there is one last thing I'm going to try so this is the logic board we've been working on. I have now put the ROMs of the non-working board, as well as the SIMs or RAMs of the non-working board into a working board, <coughs> which I just installed. So we're going to do a final double check if it really was these parts or if the problem is really on the board itself. So let's turn on, it bongs, screen comes up and it asks us for the floppy. So the problem really seems to be somewhere on the board. But I guess I will leave that for now because I actually have no idea what the problem could be. If you have any guess, please let me know in the comments. I can also try to try your solutions. And that's about it. I guess failure is part of the process. And today I failed in repairing this logic board. Take care anyways.